In the name of Jesus, amen. The high point of our service for today will be the hymn that we will sing immediately following this meditation. From the second generation of the Lutheran Reformation, a lamb goes on complaining forth, is a marvelous reflection of what is about to unfold in this holiest of weeks. The hymn was chosen to accentuate our new pyramids for Lent and Holy Week. This morning's meditation is intended to prepare you for that hymn, to hear the scriptures, to see the imagery which Paul Gerhardt used to pen such a beautiful reflection. Jesus predicted the cross and the resurrection three times before he arrived in Jerusalem, just as we began our service today. Once he set his face like a flint, there was no turning back. While the people rejoiced at the mighty works which Jesus had done, the real drama was about to unfold. While they celebrated Jesus, Jesus knew how feeble their faith really was, and so he prepared for the week ahead in Jerusalem. Forsaking heaven and his own humanity, he valiantly marched into Jerusalem on the praises of the multitude, but soon their exaltations would turn to accusations. He knew Isaiah's prophecy. He anticipated that he would experience it to the fullest degree. Despised and rejected by men, sorrowful and acquainted with grief, as one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, stricken, smitten, and afflicted by God. He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace, and by his wounds we are healed. From the beginning of time, Jesus had been seated at the right hand of God and saw all of humanity's failures, too numerous to count. He willingly stepped into our world to mend the broken heart of God. He was the Lamb of God who was sent to take away the sin of the world. Therefore, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death even death on a cross, to become our soul's greatest friend and savior. Never has nor will there be a greater love than this. As he laid down his life for us, he opened the way of salvation and gave us the joy and freedom of heaven available to us now. Come down to earth now. We are about to eavesdrop on a conversation between God and Christ as they plan your eternal salvation. The benefits of Christ's obedience are all for your gain. Death is put asunder. Life is handed over. Royal robes become your garments. And the invitation to eternity's marriage feast is placed into your hand. Paul Gerhardt, the lyricist, confidently artic articulates the hope we now have because of the events of this week so long ago. He never writes an if or a when. It is not a maybe or a possibility, but it is a completed act it is a sure thing. It is finished, Jesus cried, and your place at Christ's side is secure. This is what Holy Week is all about, dear friends. What has unfolded in our service today 
will continue to be revealed throughout the week. Here is the good news of God's good and gracious will for you. He sent his own dear son to suffer and die for the sins of humankind. And the son eagerly, willingly accepts the commission to rescue and save all people from sin, death, and the power of the devil. This is what Holy Week's all about, dear friends. Shouting crowds and waving palms, broken bread and wine outpoured, a worn wood cross and nail-pierced hands. All week, you are invited to see and to hear what God has accomplished through his Son, your Savior. O oh, wondrous love, O oh, loving might, O oh, love, this love who came to save.